Hello, my name is Bobby Zimmerman. I'm the chef owner and butcher at True Blue Butcher and Table. Uh, today, uh, celebrating the wonderful Memorial Day holiday is the kickoff to grilling season. We're going to talk about the ribeye. One of the most famous cuts of meat. You'll find it as a top seller in most steakhouses and a favorite around the grill at home. Um, it's important to know, however, that a ribeye comes in a lot of different forms. We're going to cover a lot of those today. We're going to talk about where the beef comes from, the quality level, and how to pick the most perfect cut. We're going to first start down here with a beautiful prime ribeye from a company called Beef by Lens out of Chicago. You can see it's got beautiful marbling that we'll talk about a little bit more in a little while. Over here we have a bone-in ribeye, which is the same cut, however, with the bones. Makes a great presentation. This actually comes from a single origin farm in Oregon. And over here, this is a wonderful cut of meat from Creekstone Farms outside of Kansas City. This is considered USDA choice. So, the first thing that you wanna know about a ribeye is that it has two ends. It has a chuck end and a short loin end, and those can present completely different uh, eating experiences. So we're gonna start over here on the prime, and I'm gonna show you what makes the chuck end the chuck end. If you look closely here, you're gonna see three distinct muscles. The first being the spinalis, the second the eye of ribeye, and the third the heart of ribeye. As those three muscles come together, there's a lot of flavor within this fat here, and you're gonna experience that for the first, second, and third cut. If you're looking for a little bit leaner cut, you'll wanna go from the short loin end. You notice here it's a very small amount of spinalis, mostly heart of ribeye. That's gonna eat a little bit similar to a New York strip but have the same rich flavor as a ribeye. The spinalis is important to recognize because it's everybody's favorite part of the ribeye. Also known as a cap steak, it runs the entire length of the ribeye and a lot of chefs are not removing this from the ribeye and serving it on their own. You notice on the Painted Hills version, you're gonna see the same thing and even more defined spinalis, heart of ribeye, eye of ribeye. And again, on the choice, same thing. Spinalis, eye of ribeye, heart of ribeye. The reason why it's important to know which side you're cutting from is because the fat content is a little bit higher at the chuck end than it is at the short loin end. So what we're gonna do is take a look at the inside of each one of these, and we're gonna see what center cut looked like, and then you'll be well on the way to be able to pick your favorite cut. So going directly for a center cut, I'm gonna go right in half. It's incredible marbling. And then you'll see the spinalis or the cap, and you'll see why it's called cap stick is because it kind of encapsulates with a little bit of fat in between. This is very, very sought after for most ribeye connoisseurs, and center cut's always a great way to go. If you look at the painted hills, you'll see the same thing. Center cut right here, nice part of ribeye and spinalis. And then our Creekstone choice, you'll notice they all look very, very similar. So for the most part, you know that you're gonna get a very consistent steak when you go center cut, but let's talk about the ends where it's not as consistent. Generally, the first and second cut are the most sought after by connoisseurs. In fact, we reference them to our customers as connoisseur cuts all the time. As I cut into it, you'll see why. Again, a lot of spinalis here, incredible marbling in all of these pieces. But as a warning a little bit, you get into the third and the fourth cut, this is something that we always have to be aware of. A lot of connoisseurs and ribeye lovers say they love the fats, but sometimes at the end of your meal and you've got this piece of fat left on your table, if you don't like that texture, you might feel like you didn't enjoy the steak as much. So always be sure to know which portion you're getting. If you don't want that fat kernel to go more towards the center cut, you're gonna get the real ribeye experience there. Now going back to earlier what I said, if you love the flavor of ribeye, but you don't wanna deal with that fat kernel, you can always go to the short loin end. You'll see on the short loin end, there's gonna be less fat in between the spinalis, a small amount of spinalis, 
and a much larger portion of leaner meats. If you don't have a large appetite, I might suggest taking a 16 ounce steak and cutting it in half. We're just getting one 16 ounce steak for two people. It's important because you want to allow the steak to have time to cook throughout, develop all the flavors on the crust that gives it its rich nuttiness and not overcook. So now that we've covered ribeye, I look forward to coming back and doing some more conversations about strip loin, tenderloin, and anything else that I can help with around the grill this year.